to me the notes. <laughs> and so I gave her the notes. And I, I, I don't know if they were that good, because she wasn't quite sure where to go with it, I think. <laughs> and uh, I, I said, it's a little light on illustrations. They seem to come in my head as I speak. And she's like reading the notes. Well, they're not coming to me. So. <laughs> Ain't feeling it. So, so, I, <laughs> so I told her yesterday afternoon, hey, everything was a grand success. We're headed home. And she goes, well, do you want to preach tomorrow? I said, that would be fine. She goes, oh, okay, I have notes for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. We can take our show on the road, man. <laughs> hey, you did, so, you did, you took care of that for him, honey. <laughs> so anyway, sister. it's back to me. <clears throat> but I'll tell you, it, it did seem a little light, and yet God showed me all this stuff this morning t during my time reading my Bible and drinking my coffee. So, um, and, and I just want to tell you again, everything I talk about are things that God taught me. So I don't stand up here as the expert saying, you need to get your act together. I'm up here saying, hey, Jesus finally got my act together. Won't you join us? And... and um, in talking to some folks over the last couple of weeks here also, I found it's very helpful because you meet some rotten scoundrels out there, right? You meet people who are just mean or angry or bitter or just can't seem to make a right decision. I don't think it's good for us to look at them and say they are bad, they are wicked, they are evil. I think we're really called to look at them and say they are lost just like I was. Yep. Because when you say that, it moves your heart to compassion rather than condemnation. Yes. And that's we are, what we are called to. I love that song that we sing here often. Everyone needs compassion. The love of a Savior. So, I, I call that our national anthem. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, just hear what the Lord has taught me. And, and what He has shared with me. And what He has helped me in. Lord, as we look to your word today, we invite you to speak to our hearts and minds. Because, Lord, it is your word, and you don't change. Your word stands. Matter of fact, you said heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will last forever. And Almighty God, when you wanted to speak to us, you sent Jesus, the word of God. So, when we want to know your heart, we look at Jesus. Because he was the visible incarnation of the invisible God. And so, Lord, thank you for the many ways that you have given your word to us. Bless us, Lord, as we take it to heart and put it into practice, because walking with you according to your word is so much better than anything else. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You ever made the stupid decision to indulge in something really bad, thinking, oh, just for a little while, yeah, it's like, I'm just going to sell myself into slavery for a couple of days to see what it's like, and then I'll quit. Well, no, you've sold yourself into slavery. No, right. Um, some friends of mine who were heavy into drugs in high school and afterwards, and then the Lord delivered them out of that. Some of them asked me, uh, <clears throat> oh, you didn't really struggle with drugs, did you? That wasn't an issue for you. And I said, I was so terrified that my first dose would hook me and I'd never escape. That's why I never took it. It's not that I had incredible willpower, but I was afraid I didn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so just sometimes God delivers us from the, having fallen into the mess, and sometimes God delivers us from falling into the mess. Mm -hmm. Either way is just by God's grace and mercy. And so uh, I had my own issues. But today I want to talk about freedom. America, well, the world has a very twisted view of freedom. And um, they don't have a really good definition on it. And yet today, you know, this afternoon I'll probably have a t-shirt on that says freedom is not free <laughs> or something like that. But we talk a lot about freedom and yet people today are getting so twisted and so confused that, that they're starting to believe freedom is evil. And that yes, we should be free except to do that, 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 that and that. And it's like, well, why? What do you base it on? Well, it hurts my feelings. The fact that you're breathing can hurt their feelings. So 
that's not really uh, any kind of firm foundation. So we're going to talk a little bit about freedom. Because 245 years ago, today, the founders of our nation signed a document recognizing and acknowledging that you and I <coughs> were created by God with value and purpose. They didn't decide that. They recognized that based on what the Bible says. The Declaration of Independence says, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, there's this bad trend right now that if you're patriotic about America, then you are evil and and, and they talk about, you believe, American exceptionalism, which they get totally backwards. They think it, somehow we think that because we're Americans, we're better than everybody else. Which is not true at all, or we wouldn't be sending billions of dollars to assist the poor in other countries. And we wouldn't send our military to rescue those who can't rescue themselves. But the idea that we believe that America is possibly better than any other country is because of the system that we the people have put together that values each and every person and gives each and every person an opportunity to better themselves. Most other countries don't have that. And many other countries don't believe that all people are created equal in the eyes of God. That's why some countries have a system where they gun down their poor people because they believe they just drain the system and they have no value. But we, the people of the United States, believe they are created in the image of God and endowed with value by Him. So we actually value their people more than their leaders do. That is not American exceptionalism. That is the values that we have. But there's a lot of misunderstanding about what it means to be free. Often you ask people, especially young people, what does it mean? What does freedom mean? And they're usually like, it means I can do whatever I want. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. See, in the beginning, God created us for freedom. Genesis 1, 27, 28 says, God, So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Notice he said rule over them, not slaughter them. I'm not saying go vegan. I'm just saying that uh, some people think if you believe the Bible, that means you're free to abuse any creature on the planet. That's not it at all. Any more that you're free to abuse your car. If you want it to last, you're going to take good care of it. If you have animals, you treat them kindly. And even the Leviticus law talked about the proper way to kill your animals to eat them in a way that is not tortured. A lot of other cultures believe if you torture the animal first, it improves the flavor. So the law of God is always about love and compassion. So Adam and Eve were created for freedom. Think about it. They were the richest people in history because they literally owned the world. Absolutely. <laughs> so Adam and Eve were created for freedom, but when they obeyed the serpent, they became slaves to sin. Just like some of you were created for freedom, but the day you started taking drugs, you became slaves to drugs. It wasn't because God decided to punish you, it's because you decided to do what God told you not to do, and you chose to obey the serpent, and you became a slave to sin. Romans 6, 16 and 17 Tez says, says this, Don't you realize that you became the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Thank God once you were slaves to sin, but now you wholeheartedly obey this teaching we have given you. Some of you might think, well, that's pretty harsh that God punishes. No, we just do it to ourselves. 
Just like when your parents, you know, tell your teenage daughter, don't talk to strange men, right? Because they want to kidnap you and sell you. No, you don't understand. He's different, you know. <laughs> there are thousands of child slaves because they thought their parents were trying to prevent their freedom. Now they know what true lack of freedom is. And they're living a nightmare. Jesus said in Galatians 5.1, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. God created you to be free. How crazy is that if you are delivered from slavery, and then you start thinking, slavery wasn't that bad. I heard a line in a movie once, he was a great master, he hardly ever beat me. <laughs> Yeah, you laugh, it describes your ex <laughs> that maybe you went back to a couple of times, all right? For sure. <laughs> it is for freedom that Christ has set you free. He didn't set you free and say, obey me so you'll miss out on the good stuff. No, I mean, what do you put on a hook to catch a fish? Bait. You put bait, something that looks tasty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why do we call it when somebody's addicted to drugs? They're hooked, yeah. right? So what is freedom? A homeless person once told Dennis Butner, I like living out here because I get to call my own shots. And Dennis replied, you don't have any shots to call. <laughs> it's the illusion of freedom, right? So what is freedom? Some people would say, when people get to do whatever they want, you know what? That's the definition of anarchy. And anarchy always goes bad, always leads to destruction. It always steals, kills, and destroys. Matter of fact, prison is full of people who try to do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. And they are not free. So let's look at what God's Word says. What is freedom? 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, Now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. Where is the spirit of the Lord? If you've given your life to Jesus, he's right here. So by your very nature, you are free. John 8.31 and 32, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I met so many people that were just imprisoned in their mind. They thought they were living drudgery and, and living a miserable life. And then when I pointed out the truth of the gospel and what the reality of their situation was, they were actually set free. Because most prison exists in our heads. We are enslaved to hate. We're enslaved to addiction. I, I talked to people who grew up poor and they said, I never knew I was poor until somebody told me. And what they did was try to create a prison for you. And now our world is totally focused. They said, no matter how good your life is, you're being ripped off. It could be better. And those people are the ones to blame for it. So they are imprisoning people in their mind instead of letting them live the blessed life. John 8.36 says, so if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. Free to do whatever you want? Not really unless what everything you want to do is the will of God, then yeah, you're free to do whatever you want in that sense. But see, freedom doesn't mean you get to do whatever you want. Freedom means you're no longer a prisoner. That's right. mm -hmm. And if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed, no matter what anybody else tries to do to you. Paul said in Colossians 1, 13 and 14, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. I was talking to somebody out in this waiting area in Stanford yesterday. I was talking to somebody and I said, The amazing thing about what God does is the terrible things you and I have gone through God helps bring you peace from those memories by using your worst moment and your brokenness 
to encourage and give life and hope to somebody else who's going through the same thing. I mean, if you went through cancer, you are equipped better than me to give hope and encouragement to somebody going through cancer. You are living proof that God can deliver. If you survive rejection or abuse and divorce and, and life is good now, you give hope to others who have just been rejected or going through divorce. And I've been told by time and time again by people, the fact that I was able to give them hope helped redeem my hurtful past. It actually gives value to that part of your life that you thought had no value. And you are free to help them in ways that other people are not. Peter said in 1 Peter 2.9, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. Please take that very personal. Mm -hmm. You are chosen. God intended each and every... None of you are just along for the ride because of who you're sitting next to. God intended for you to follow Him. He chose you. He has a special plan just for you. Plans that bring you freedom. Not, uh, not to enslave you in darkness. So, how will you use your freedom? How can you use that God-given freedom? Because you, you can kind of tell what's inside. When, when, there's a, when people think there's freedom... What comes out is what they're hoping for. A city has a blackout, suddenly people are smashing windows and stealing TVs. To them, that's freedom. If I'm free to do whatever I want, here's whatever I, I would do. I, I was appalling once um, when, when the whole... Um, when the hearings to confirm uh, one of the Supreme Court nominees and the whole idea of uh, sexual harassment came up. Um, Gosh, I'm blanking on his name right now. Clarence. Uh, Clarence Thomas? Yeah, yeah. So that was big news. And it's good out of all that that sexual, uh, sexual harassment was taken much more seriously after that. But it was a mess. But I remember reading Time Magazine. They took a survey of men that said, if you could get away with sexual assault without getting caught, would you do it? More than half of them said yes. Ladies, you need to be very aware of that. Because that was over 20 years ago. Things have degenerated since then. It's appalling what people think freedom is. And what will you use your freedom for? Again, Galatians 5.1 says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. The best way to avoid that chaos is to want what God wants. That's what true freedom is. So even though Jesus set you free, you always have the choice to sell yourself back into slavery. Yep. But you cannot come and go back and forth because it's slavery. I've met, met so many people, they, like, they quit smoking for seven years and they show up smoking again. It's like, what happened? I don't know, I just... Thought I'd just have one for old time's sake. I'm going to ask somebody who's kind of artistic to draw me a poster of a cigarette wearing a wife beater. It says, hey, let's get together for one old time's sake. <laughs> because it seems to apply to so many situations. I've met people who were off drugs for over 10 years. And then that voice just came, hey, why not one time? Or, life's hard, you deserve this. Boom, they're enslaved again. And many times, according to Scripture, it says those demons find seven more more wicked than themselves. And the condition is worse than they were in the first place. So how will you use your freedom? You can always go back to your drug addiction, but you will be enslaved again. You can always go back to your abuser that God delivered you from. You can always go back to being a slave to your bodily cravings. 
You can always take God's gift of freedom and throw it away. But God created you for freedom. It's what He called you to. The Son has set you free. You are free indeed. So don't sell yourself again to a yoke of slavery. How can you keep yourself from falling back into bondage again? Let's look again at what we mentioned before, 2 Corinthians 3.17. Now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. In Acts 2.38, Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In other words, if you've said yes to Jesus, the Holy Spirit lives in you. Even if you're not rolling on the floor speaking in tongues. <laughs> or... Or, you know, seeing sparks come out when you pray. Whatever Hollywood has told you it looks like to give your life to Jesus and have the Holy Spirit in you, put that aside and just believe God in His Word. Because, see, where the Spirit is, there is freedom. John 8, 31 and 32, Jesus said, If you hold my teaching, you are really my disciples, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So, in other words, hold the Jesus teaching... And you will know the truth. And the world doesn't get it. Because when you say things like, bless those who curse you, they're like, then you're just going to be a doormat. Yeah, if God's not part of the picture. But you don't have to fight if there's somebody much stronger, much more powerful, who loves you so much he would die for you on a cross. He will be your guardian and protector. And he will watch out for your best good. I, I've had several people at Crosstown where somebody was so rude to you. And you thought, okay, Jesus said, don't hit back, turn the other cheek, bless those who curse you. Some even said, God bless you, which just made him more mad. And they went home. And that person later came and apologized and talked about what an awful day they'd had. And thanked them for being gracious to them. That's God's opportunity. Instead of buying into the devil's way of doing things. 1 Peter 2.9, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. So remember the dark place that Jesus pulled you out of. And declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. There's a couple of ladies who kept going back to the same abusive boyfriend. And I said, look... When you break up with him, write him a letter explaining all the reasons you're breaking up with him, but don't send it to him. Keep it and stick it in your desk. So every time you say stupid stuff like, he hardly ever beat me, he was a great guy. Pull that letter out and read it again. Because it, it's not to build hatred of him, it's to remind you of the darkness that the Lord delivered you out of, so you don't go back. You see, you were created for freedom. When you were enslaved to sin, Jesus came to set you free. And walking with Jesus every day will keep you from being enslaved again. It's the life He intended for you. A life of freedom. So when you read in Scripture and you read His commands, don't think, oh yeah, I should try that sometime. Like it's just some holy principle. No, it's obedience to Christ. You obey the one you love. I've met a lot of people that them and Jesus, they're just kind of living together to see if things work out. Mm -hmm. But they're not really committed. All right, let me read for you what God showed me this morning. And a lot of this was geared towards me, so don't think I'm pointing out anybody here. <laughs> I've spoken before about how frustrating and disappointing it is when good leaders become concerned for holding their position rather than serving in that position the way God intended. And today I'm seeing how those leaders begin to stumble. With every blessing that God gives, there's the opportunity for fear to creep in that I may lose that blessing that God has given. The natural inclination is to start spending energy to protect those blessings even in opposition to God, in case he should choose to take them away. In this way, 
a person can actually begin to plot how he can thwart the plans and intentions of God. So how can I avoid going there? What is the truth that I must fill my mind with so my heart can be set free indeed? If I truly believe that God has indeed given me these blessings, then I am acknowledging that I have not gained them by my own hand. And if these things have been given to me by God, then it is by the hand of God that they'll be sustained. If the Lord chooses to take them away, it is for His plans, and His plans are always good and demonstrates His love for you. Therefore, I can trust Him in all things. If I believe that they are rewards for my faithfulness, then I will fear that they will be taken away if my faithfulness has fallen short. But if I see, that these, blessing, see these blessings as responsibilities handed to me by God, then my focus will be to be faithful in them and all that I do. See, according to the teachings of Jesus, the more faithful I am, the more responsibility the Lord will place in my hands. And when I begin to think that it is all about me, even what little I have will be taken away and given to someone else. If my heart is truly drawn to follow the Lord my God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, then I will worship Him down any path that He takes me. I will not doubt His love and faithfulness no matter what turn my life takes. I will trust Him in all things. Any loss that I suffer will be for my good and to further His kingdom. Ultimately, He desires a close love relationship with me, and that is the lens I must see all things through. Amen. Therefore, when I'm hesitant or afraid, I must trust that all I have is in His hands and trust Him with it. Job said, The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If I suffer any loss, I must not self-doubt that it is some sort of punishment. It is the Lord's pruning process for my good. He loves me and is always working for my good. And when I say my, I'm talking about you all also, okay? I'm not saying I'm in a different class here. Whatever the Lord has put in my hands, He also can keep it there. And if the Lord has anointed you in some area of leadership or influence, as an act of faith, you need to walk in that anointing and confidence. Your name is not the one being exalted, but you walk in the name of Jesus. And I must measure all that I say and do in light of what the Lord thinks, not what everybody else thinks. Understand this, God is not cruel or wicked. <laughs> Therefore, I can confess any fear I have and fill myself with the truth about His deep love for me. Because His perfect love will drive out all fear and the truth will set me free. As I come to understand all that God has given me, as I give Him glory for all that I am and all that I have and do, it will build in my life a holy fear of the Lord. That I would fear stepping outside of His will. Not because of punishment, because of, I don't want to disappoint Him. And what He has is best for me, so I want to walk in it Amen. all the days of my life. Yes, a fear of the Lord that I would not want to let Him down or disappoint Him in any way. That I would remember that I am but a breath. That I can be here and then gone in a moment. Also acknowledging the Lord can accomplish whatever He wants with or without me. Therefore, it's never about me. And that the love of God endures forever. And His mercies are renewed every day. Remembering that His intentions for me are peace and joy. His intentions for you are peace and joy. If you're going through a hardship, don't think, oh, I have to submit to this because God's punishing me for my sin. No, that would be Jesus on the cross. 
He was punished for your sin. And if you don't think that was good enough, I dare you to say it out loud to Jesus. Jesus, what you did on the cross wasn't quite enough to redeem me. Sounds pretty stupid and downright scary when you actually verbalize it. So instead, just thank Him for what He did for you on the cross. His intentions for you are peace and joy. Not to fuss over what you've done or might have done. Amen. I acknowledge that I will not walk this earth forever, but for a limited time. Therefore, I must be very careful how I walk, not as unwise, but as wise, redeeming these times, because the days are evil. Understand this, I have come to find that the Lord has been very good to me. I was looking at Psalm 34, verses 4 and 6. I sought the Lord, and He answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Yes. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. Amen. The bottom line, has God given me all that I have, or has it been built by my own hand? Mm. Has God given to me just so He can yank it back out from under me? Can the Lord sustain what He has given me, or am I on my own? Does the Lord love me because He created me, or because I accomplished certain tasks? No, the Lord loves you deeply. It's for freedom that He set you free. There, there's a chant that every 13-year-old tells their mother, you're just trying to ruin all my fun. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've known 60-year-old, 13-year-olds who stand before God. You're just trying to ruin all my fun. Let's go back to Egypt. It was so fun there. They hardly ever beat me. Right. How many of you who used to be addicted thought, if I quit, I'll miss out on the good life? Well, it sucked the life out of you. Right. Or, yeah, he's an abuser, but at least he's somebody. What if I can't find anybody else? Right. How can you find anybody else if you cling to the abuser? That's right. Not me. <laughs> Not me. God created you for peace and joy. He created you for freedom. Not so you're free to do whatever you want. Freedom so you won't be enslaved anymore. And there are lots of things that the devil tries to use to you, enslave you. Yeah. Drugs, abusive, bad relationships, anger and hatred, self-pity. There's a, a vast array of things that the devil uses to try to enslave you again. Sometimes you'll be delivered from one thing and then you say, well, I need a little bit of this to get by. And you replace one bad coping mechanism mm -hmm. with another because you refuse to believe the truth yeah. that Jesus told you. But see, the truth will set you free. His perfect love will drive out all fear. Amen. It's what God intended for you. And there are so many lies out there right now. Redefining love. Redefining patriotism. Redefining what it means to care. And their definitions are all centered around hate. Woe to those who call light darkness and darkness light and love hate and hate love. Jesus is the definition of love. Let's go to him in prayer. Lord, I thank you for raising godly awareness. And Lord, we can freak ourselves out by trying to list all the different ways that the devil wants to enslave us. But Lord Jesus, you gave us a much easier way of dealing with it. You said, come follow me. And Lord, you never led your disciples into sin. But you gave them a new level of freedom that was unknown at that time. You freed them from fear. You freed them from hate. You freed them from believing they were worthless and insignificant. Lord, you used many of the poorest of the poor to become leaders in your church. 
and of such tremendous significance, we still speak their name and quote their words today. Because they chose to follow you and speak your words and follow your example. And so, Lord, we thank you that you came to set the captives free. Yes, Lord. Lord Jesus, you said the Spirit of the Lord had anointed you for release for the captives and the prisoners. You talked about setting free those who were behind bars and those who were enslaved. And Lord, while the situation around us may or may not change, what's going on in our heart and mind is free indeed. And so, Lord, thank you for your intentions for us. And Lord, we invite you right now to search us and know us and expose in us those lies of the devil that are still holding us in bondage. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we invite you to replace those lies of the devil with your word because your word is truth. And when we know the truth, we are free indeed. Lord Jesus, you said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so, Lord, when we pursue the truth, we are pursuing you. And, Lord, there are people around who believe you are just the ultimate kindergarten teacher who taught us not to hit each other, not to take each other's stuff, and to sit and be quiet. No, Lord, there is power in what you told us to do. And we are not just on our own to try to be nice. We are trusting you to take care of your kingdom business. And you have invited us to go along with you. And so, Lord, we are not on our own. We carry your spirit in our hearts, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And so, Lord, thank you for our God-given freedom. Lord, thank you for this freedom knows no borders except the hearts and minds of men and women. But your power extends across the seas and around the world. And Lord, there are only two races in this world, the people of God and the people of the world. Mm -hmm. And yet, you are looking at each and every person on this planet saying, I choose you. Come and follow me and be amazed at what we can do together. So Lord, thank you that we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood representing God to the lost and the lost before God. A holy nation set aside for the purposes of God. That we may walk in your light and marvel and celebrate that you have drawn us out of the darkness. And brought us into your marvelous light so that we would know the true meaning of freedom. Lord, thank you for accomplishing this in us today. Expose the lies of the enemy, Lord, that would try to ensnare us again. But Lord, this day... We choose to give you thanks for the freedom you have given us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.